بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين العبد المأيد الرسول المسدد المصطفى الأمجد المحمود الأحمد أبي القاسم مصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم أما بعد فقد قال الحكيم في كتابه الكريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم Dear brothers and sisters, in this session I'm going to explain the rules of kafara for breaking your fast. As I may have, as I may have touched in the previous session, it is not permissible to break your fast in the month of Ramadan when you are observing an obligatory fast and there were nine things which a fasting person should avoid and should keep away so as not to break his fast. In case a person however breaks his fast then it would be necessary for him to make up the fast as well as give a penalty. Now, it is clear for you that you, if you break your fast voluntarily, willingly and intentionally, only in this case it will be necessary to pay the kafara or penalty for breaking your fast. But if you break your fast forgetfully or unintentionally, the fast is actually not broken. The fast remains in order. And you will not have to give the qada nor any kafara the fast will not be affected. Now there is a situation where, for example, you might be forced to break your fast or maybe something is dropped forcibly into your throat. Now the question is whether the fast becomes wide. If something is dropped into your throat forcibly, The grand religious authorities say that the fast in this case is not made wide because he did not break it intentionally. Something was dropped down the throat of the fasting person and he had to swallow it the thing went down his throat or went down into his stomach and he had no intention. So there was sotion, there was force and there was compulsion. He did not pick up the food to drink, uh, to eat or he did not pick up a glass of water to drink it himself. In case, for example, you are threatened or you are f intimidated by someone to drink 
or to break your fast, to eat something, or to have sexual intercourse, in that case, of course, your fast becomes wide, and it will be necessary to give qada, but it is not necessary to give any kafara because you are intimidated, you are under threat. Many people, for example, in uh, some Salafi-dominated countries and some Wahhabi states, for example, are under threat. They have to break their fast with their colleagues. They have to break their fast in a gathering of uh, non-Shia people and they cannot expose themselves. They cannot tell others that they are Shia. And in that case, they have to break their fast for fear of their life and because of threat. In that case, of course, the fast is made wide and it will be necessary to give qada, but kafara will not be obligatory. That is one of the questions which are asked very frequently. There are millions of Shias living in Sunni populated or predominantly Sunni countries. Most of those Shias are exercising taqiyya. Most of them are exercising quietism or dissimulation. Or they are afraid of losing their jobs and their um, property and so on and so forth. In this case, the fast, of course, if broken, if Iftar is done, the fast becomes wide, but the kafara does not become obligatory. Dear brothers and sisters, before explaining the rules of kafara, of course I will touch, I will give explanations about the kafara, but the rules of kafara are, uh, have to be given and explained in details. There are some cases I have to mention. There are some cases where for example, which are makruh for a person who is observing fast. And those things, of course, uh, are the, fo the, the following. I will just mention them right now. Now, the first one is using eye drops. Eye drops, of course, is not haram to use. It is not forbidden to use eye drops. It is makruh to use eye drops. This is one thing. The second thing is, is to donate your blood when you are fasting. Blood donation is not haram when you are fasting. But since it will affect your, your strength and your energy, and it will have some impact on your weakness, and on your body, then it will be makru for you, it will be abominable for you to uh, go for blood donation. And of course, uh, having ablution or having a bath under hot water is also makru. These are makru things which I'm going to mention. And the next is Inhaling snuff, a snuff is a green product or yes, usually used in countries like Pakistan and Afghanistan. Of course, uh, this is uh, uh, not haram, but inhaling it is, inhaling it is makru, it is abominable. And also smelling fragrant herbs. It is makru, it's not haram. Many people think that using perfume and also smelling um, fragrant things uh, are haram. Of course, they are not haram. Yeah.
it is also makru for a woman to sit in in the water. It is makru, and it is also makru for a person to use suppository, suppository. And of course, suppository is something like uh, like a capsule put in the rectum for some medical purposes, and that is makru. It will not uh, affect your fast. It will not invalidate your fast. Only, as I mentioned, inserting liquid or introducing liquid into the rectum will invalidate the fast. But if something is not liquid, if it's something solid, it will not break. It will be abominable. And also wearing a wet dress or wetting the dress. For example, to have the pipe on your body and make your clothes wet. It is makru. It's not haram. And also, it is makru for you to get your tooth extracted, to pull out your tooth because of the blood which will come out. And it's very much likely that the blood might go down your throat. But since you are not intentionally, you're not going intentionally to throw or to swallow the blood, in that case, it will be abominable, it will be undesirable to extract or to pull out your tooth. And also it is makru, for example, to uh, brush your teeth with a wet uh, brush or to wash your teeth with a wet brush. When the brush is already wet and you insert it into your mouth and you start brushing your tooth, it is makru to, to, to use a wet brush. And of course, it is not um, haram and you should be careful not to swallow the moisture, the liquid that is with the brush. Otherwise your fast will be made white. And also putting liquid or water into your mouth or in your mouth for some reasons is makru. And, of course, you are not going to swallow the liquid, the water, but even the putting the water in your mouth and keeping it in your mouth is abominable. And the last thing which is also abominable is to engage in playing with your partner. For example, a man four plays with his wife, even if there is no ejaculation and nothing like that, but playing and keeping and wooing, for example, engaging and kissing and hugging and so on and, and so forth is makru and one should try to avoid even if he is sure, even if he is sure that he is not going to ejaculate but one should avoid such things while fasting. Now, coming to, to the kafara for fasting, of course, as I mentioned, there are nine things which if a person uses or if a person does not avoid, then his fast will be made white. And those things are, of course, as I mentioned, they are eating, drinking, sexual intercourse, and masturbation, and staying in Janaba or in Hayes and Nefas until dawn, and also enema, and of course, uh, a few other things. And if a person, of course, does not keep away from such things, then he will have to pay kafara as well as the qadha. And one, should, one thing that should be noted, and that is, if a person breaks his fast with a halal thing, the kafara is different from when he breaks some, his fast with a haram thing. For example, if you drink water which is halal, your fast will be made white, and you will have to give kafara, but the kafara is only 60 days of fasting. But if you break your fast with, by drinking wine, then the kafara 
will be doubled or tripled. For example, you will have to uh, combine between setting a slave free and also you have to observe fast for 60 days, 31 days in a row. And also you have to feed 60 poor people to their field, to their field of course. Uh, this is the difference. For example, sexual intercourse with one's wife is permissible by itself. If you have, if you engage in sexual intercourse in the month of Ramadan, while you are fasting, you will have to observe 60 days of fasting and you will have to, or, or maybe you have to feed 60 poor people. One of them will be obligatory. But if you engage, if you, for example, have sexual intercourse when your wife is in her monthly period and when she is bleeding then in this case you have committed a haram act and also you have broken your fast you have committed two haram acts one is the sexual intercourse uh, in the while your fa while your wife was in the month of uh, in the monthly period and another that you broke your fast by something haram if a fasting person breaks his fast with something haram, then he has to combine his fast. He has to combine between setting a slave free, fasting for 60 days, 31 days in a, in a row, and also feeding 60 poor people. Or maybe he has to give one mood of food to each 60 poor person. It has to be mentioned that one mood of food stuff is equal to 750 grams of food. Now, the food can be anything. It can be wheat, it can be barley, it can be flour, it can be rice, or it can be noodles. Anything that uh, uh, from these things can be given to the poor. But it has to be, if it is given to the poor, then it, it must be one mood, it, it cannot be less than one mood. And of course, one mood is equal to 750 grams. It is less than one kilogram. And of course, some people do ask questions as about uh, saying that they are not, un they are not able to uh, observe fast for, for 60 days and they are not even able to feed 60 poor people because they are poor and they don't have the resources, they don't have the income to buy food and to distribute among the poor and the needy. Uh, the Grand Religious Authorities have said that if a person is unable to give food to 60 poor people, then he must uh, uh, of, of course he must uh, seek divine forgiveness and of course he can give sadaqah as much as he can if he can give food for example to less than 60, poor, 60 persons then he should give it and uh, he should also seek divine forgiveness and as an obligatory precaution whenever he can as an obligatory precaution because this is not a fatwa this is a precaution as an oblig obligatory precaution, if he can give food or feed 60 poor people, in future he should do so. And of course, um, if he cannot do that, then he, the istighfar, the seeking forgiveness would suffice. <laughs> Now, one thing has to be noted, as I said, if a person uh, chooses to, f to observe fast for 60 days, then he has to observe 31 days continuously. Observe fast th 31 days continuously. He cannot observe fast for five days and then again for another five days, and then there is an, an interval. He stops fasting and then again 
he observed fast for another five or six days. That cannot be, that is not correct. One should observe fast for 31 days without stoppage. There should not be any interval. And one should make sure that if he is going to observe fast, he should choose a time uh, in which there is no, uh, for example, legal impediment. For example, if a person observes fast in the beginning of, of, uh, uh, of course, uh, Zil Hajjah, then there will be uh, the Eid al Adha on the 10th of Zil Hajjah. And of course, he, will ha he cannot observe fast on the 10th of Zil Hajjah because it's the day of Eid al Adha. So one should not choose a month in which he will have to break his fast or in which there is one day in which fasting is forbidden. Yes, so he should make sure that there is no such day in which fasting is forbidden. And there is one thing else to be noted and that is if a person has to break his fast due to a justified excuse or an, an, a valid excuse, an uncontrollable factor for example, if a woman has to observe fast for 31 days and she enters the state of hayd or the state of nifas, then this is not within her control. Uh, and in this case, it will not be necessary for her to repeat the fast all over again. Whatever days he ha she has observed fast, that will be counted. She can continue and carry on observing fast after the monthly period. And she can continue observing fast after, after the uh, nifas bleeding is over. But in other cases, for example, when there is not an, a valid excuse and a person observes fast and he does not care about the Eid al-Adha day or such other days, then Whatever he has fasted or observed fast, it will not be counted and he has to begin observing fast all over again. Those days which he observe, in which he observed fast will not be counted. Because it's necessary, it is obligatory that 31 days of the fast should be continuous. There should be no interval. Dear brothers and sisters, if a person wants to go on a journey and he is, uh, for example, uh, and he wants to uh, observe fast on such a day, it is haram. One cannot observe fast for 31 days and still go on a journey. It is haram for him to either fast on, on a journey or to, uh, to take such a, a journey, for example. So he should either go on a journey and should not observe fast or he should observe fast and should not go on a journey. If a person is observing qada fast, as you know, as you know very well, it is not permissible for him to break his fast when the midday has crossed, when the midday has passed. He should keep fasting because he is observing the qada of the previous fast. In case, in case he wants to break his fast or he breaks his fast despite the fact that it is forbidden for him to break his fast, then in this case, uh, he must give kafara, but the kafara is different. The kafara is to observe, uh, to observe three days of fast. That is the kafara. And if he cannot observe fast for three days, then he must feed 60 poor people. There should be, it should be noted that the poor people should be Shia. They should be needy. 
they should be indigent and they should be faithful because if you are going to give the food to him he should not use the food for, for any haram purpose he should be a deserving person a needy in the real sense and a faithful person a faithful person is a practicing person he is one who observes his wajibat who performs his wajibat and also keeps away from haram things You cannot give the food, the kafara, or the food which you are going to give to the needy people. You cannot give it to non-Shia people, to non-Muslims, and to a person who is corrupt, who is not offering his prayers and who is not observing fast. And, it's also, and, should, and it should also be noted that the kafara of fasting if you are going to give kafara, should be given to 60 different poor people. You cannot give the entire 60, 45 kilograms, for example, you cannot give it to one person or to one family of a family of five people. You can give 750 grams of food stuff to each member of a family if you want to give all of the family members a quantity of foodstuffs, you can give 750 grams of foodstuffs to each member of the family. And you cannot give the entire kafara to a single family, a family of five people. So it, it, it is very important. And of course, there is a difference between fidya and a kafara. Fidya is the food which you give because you are sick and because you cannot observe fast. You can give it to, a, to one family and to one person. But the kafara cannot be given. The kafara for breaking your fast intentionally and deliberately cannot be given to one and the same person. And It, is, it has to be also noted that if a fasting person imputes lies to Allah and the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and also his wise gerents, the ulama and the scholars have said that it is necessary for that person to give the qadha as well as kafara. And the kafara is, of course, only the kafara uh, is only 60 uh, observing fast for 60 days or maybe observing uh, giving fast giving food to the needy and to the poor uh, to 60 needy and poor people some people ask questions about husbands and wife for example if a husband makes his wife his wife, to have sexual intercourse with him and he compels his wife. Here the grand religious authorities have said that the husband should give two kafara and the woman should give one kafara. But if it is vice versa, if the woman asks or makes her husband to have sexual intercourse with her, in this case, it is not necessary for the woman to give two kafara. She has to give the kafara for her own, and the husband should have should give kafara of himself. It is not necessary for the woman to give two kafaras. She has to give one kafara, and the husband should also give a kaf the kafara of his own. Dear brothers and sisters, these, are, these were some of the rules and some of the details given in regards to the kafara or the penalties for breaking your fast intentionally and deliberately and 
inshallah in the next session to come I will further carry on explaining the rules of kafara as well as the rules of fasting inshallah wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ربنا يا ربنا يا ربنا يا ربنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا يا ربنا ربنا يا ربنا يا ربنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا يا ربنا يا ربنا ربنا يا ربنا يا ربنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا يا ربنا ربنا يا ربنا يا ربنا